I love the one where they want because Zach is over at Netflix. They want Netflix to like resurrect the Snyder. I'm like, what? Bro, what are you talking about, man? What up, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of the Nerd Gen Report. I'm your host, Pablo, and joining me as always is Mr. Brian Shows. Brian, finally, who we've been waiting for, we've been talking about as of late. Uh, finally, James Gunn came out and spoke about what his plans are. Um, and we're going to discuss our overall impression of this announcement and what it means uh, for the DCU. Uh, Brian, uh, first of all, I, I wasn't expecting this today. It came out of nowhere for me. I, I even I think it was it was Freddie that sent the text to to the group and said what was being said and i immediately went on to the to the to, to the to the web to go check out what was happening and i saw the video brian and i was my first impression brian i have to say i was a bit confused as towards the names that he was announcing in terms of some of the projects and then i started reading into it and I think I'm cool with what James Gunn has announced. What are your thoughts? So January 31st, 2023 will be a fulcrum date for DC projects. And we'll see how this goes. You know, I think the tricky thing when you're trying to emulate the success of the MCU, you don't want to be seen as copycatting them too much. And so I think the kind of simple low tech format that they used for this was an attempt at that. I'd be curious to see in the future if that changes, but I think it was very deliberate to say like, Hey, I'm not going to get up on a stage. I'm not going to throw up huge logos and big music. And I'm just going to kind of keep it simple. But I will say this, I think if the mission was very simplistically to take the initial seeds of hope that have been planted on social media leading up to this event. I would say that James Gunn and Peter Saffron and David Zaslav succeeded in keeping hope alive by and large with the information that we were given. I think I was taken aback by how much kind of behind the curtain information they gave and i think that's where i want to start because there was a i mean very candid discussion about the history of dc filmmaking and television shows there was very candid discussion about the approach they are trying to take with regard to release dates and projects and timing it's just not the kind of thing you usually get from a studio for this kind of thing I appreciated it, but there was a lot and a lot of clickbait and, you know, quite frankly, some very pointed comments being, I mean, James Gunn was not pulling his punches. He was throwing punches in his comments, if anything. And, you know, we, we'll get through the quotes and we'll get through it. But I think the tact wasn't the worst one to take. I mean, it's certainly a big change from what we've seen. We'll get to it. I, there's a couple of things that they put out there that no one was talking about that I think could be home runs if they pull it off. And there's a couple of things that yeah, I'm a little, what you know, we'll get to that too. But yeah, yeah. as I said, it not not everything's got to hit. I mean, that's but everything has to make sense. Certainly that, because of how he's trying to format, how he's trying to make everything connected. You come, you talk about some people saying, oh, it doesn't have to be connected and all this stuff. James Gunn is all about connectivity. It's about connection. It's all about connections. That's all, that's all he's been talking about, Brian, is the connectivity. I mean, he's even, he's going a step beyond what Marvel is doing in terms of connectivity. Uh, he's talking about co cartoons, comics, uh, see everything connected that's pretty ambitious let's see how that turns out and i think he's also 
I actually appreciate the Elseworlds label. So the, I, I yes. like the fact that they are clearly delineating what is canon and what is Elseworlds because I do think the audience can get confused, right? You have yeah, to yeah, assume yeah. that not everyone, at the end of the day, for these projects to work, you have to get non-comic book audiences to want to be, to want to see and tune in to these. And the only way you're going to do that is if they feel like once they pick up an individual project or go to the theater to see an individual film, they don't necessarily feel like, oh my God, I have to watch 12 other things just to see the one thing I want. They have to understand what they're actually looking at. And so I appreciate that there is some carryover and some overlap. And they're basically saying, no, we're going to draw a clear distinction. Elseworlds, canon. And like, it's going to be clear from the outset which projects are which so the audience does not get confused. Yeah, these these else that elsewhere thing is very key, man, because now you can do stories um that you wouldn't do or you couldn't do because of this connected world that you're doing. And these elsewhere I think should be dedicated um a lot to some of the the the, the classic storylines that we we've seen in the comics and in the animated um uh films that they've done. Uh, you know what it also does? I think it's also a solution to, you know, obviously the, the Warner Brothers is lucky in the sense that its biggest existing Elseworlds projects are under the stewardship of Todd Phillips and Matt Reeves. I interpret Elseworlds to also be an invitation to directors in particular who don't want to be signed to interconnected universe four five six projects but have a passion i passionate idea it's yeah. an invitation to say come to us you want to do a self-contained story about a beloved character that you've always wanted to do and you don't want it to touch everything else we're here for you in a way that marvel's formula kind of doesn't allow yeah i think that's really the code of what elseworlds exists for what were some of the things that James Gunn said regarding the... Do you want to get into the previous regime? Let's uh, just start. Let's just start with that because I was not... I mean, look. The, the, the oldest play in, the, in, the, in a corporate playbook is new management putting old management under the bus when they come in, right? That's the, you get one chance to do it, but you usually don't see people take that card and play it. Yeah. And like, James Gunn not holding back in saying what we've all recognized for 15 this for years. He <laughs> saying this for years. So, I mean, I'll, I'll edit it a little bit, mm -hmm. but since not all the language was for kids, because okay. he flat out said the history has been bleep. It's been real effed up, the journey for DC. <laughs> I mean, right there, like, why bury the lead? That's true. Yeah. But this was the one I texted you that blew my mind. I think that there was basic quote. I think that there was basically no one minding the mint and they were giving out IP to any creatives that smiled at whoever was in charge. Wow. I mean, that shots wow. fired at a lot of folks. The whole like I was misquoted, misconstrued. No, no, no. He doubles <laughs> and triples that. He said. <laughs> and then and listen, if you follow this channel, you know our view of the political machinations of Warners and DC and all these different camps. We've been pretty on this, and it's a lot yeah. of what we've said has been confirmed afterwards. So I leave it to you, the audience, as to who he's talking about when he talks about this. Okay. There was never any real power given to the people in charge, he says. And so somebody could always go over their head and do whatever they wanted. Gee, I don't know. Who, who could he possibly be talking about there? And the rock walking down the ramp. This, is, this part was even better. We had the DCEU. That became the Joss, Wyden, Joss Whedon Justice League. That also became the Snyderverse. And that became this. We have Wonder Woman. And we have Wonder Woman 2, which doesn't even match what happened in Wonder Woman 1. I mean, for somebody who Yo. wiped his hands completely of the Patty Jenkins situation, he's like, wait, wait. Let me just empty a few rounds of the chamber at Patty Jenkins while I'm at it. Wow. I didn't even know where, I didn't even see that quote. I didn't even see that quote. And then he points the finger at himself. And I do respect this. He said, and then, quote, we have the Arrowverse. And even us, 
coming in with Suicide Peacemaker. What is that exactly? Question mark. Yeah. So he basically is outing himself as guilty of almost taking advantage or participating in the mess. So he wraps it up and brings it full circle. Quote, how can we make, how can we take these things together, make them make sense and have them unified and have it one real universe and one real world? It's about connection. <laughs> Music to my ears, Brian. And I'm glad that he points to himself and says, you know what, I, I participated in these shenanigans. Mm -hmm. You know? because I was given an opportunity. Who would have thought, Brian, he never probably thought that he was gonna be in the position that he is now. He was given an opportunity to participate in a world that he you know, loved and he took advantage of that opportunity and made something that he wanted to make, right? And now he realizes what must be done in order to compete, because that's what it is, Brian. Zaslav wants that paper. More money, more money, more money. <laughs> One of the things that he did not specifically say, but it, it when I when I heard it and thought about it, I think he's also pointing the finger at himself and acknowledging one of the elephants in the room, which is that Suicide Squad was a failure commercially. He's never really talked about that. Yeah. But I think what he's suggesting is that, yes, I was one of the people who smiled at the creatives and they handed me the IP I wanted to play with. He said, but because it didn't make sense with everything that was going on, I think if you read between the lines, he's saying that's part of why it wasn't as successful as it could have and should have been. So he's kind of taken some ownership of like, yeah, like my own experience is what I'm telling you about as one of many confusing and sometimes disastrous experiences. But look, the going over the head, look, we know he's talking about Dwayne Johnson. And I think he's talking about Henry Cavill, too, because we'll get to that later. He, Henry Cavill had a tough press conference here. Um, but this was kind of shocking to, to have all this, like, on the record. Where, like, you know, took everyone to task, including yeah. himself. Yeah. And said, we're going to do it different. And you got to respect it. You got to respect it. Peter Saffron, who we've not heard from. This was the other thing that I thought was fascinating. This was he got on the mic. He got this on the mic. And I was like, oh, this is... He got on the mic and he did what you would expect. James Gunn talked creative. Peter Saffron talked business. And Pablo, I did want to start with the first piece of business that caught my eye. And I said, I texted you, I said, smart. They're capping themselves. No more than two films, no more than two shows per year. I think that's good. That's excellent. That means that there's focus in what they want to do and that they're not going to spread themselves too thin and try to do too much and end up where what Tracy used to say, those guys across the street are at now, <laughs> you know? So yeah. they don't want Marvel's 2022 and Marvel's 2021. They don't want a replay of that. Yeah. Now, I think there's a subplot here. Let's, we'll bring it back around to the finances later on. But he said that that caught my eye. A studio committing itself to a limit on productions. That's unusual. No. <laughs> Most studios can't wait to put more content out. They're saying, no, we're not going past this quota year by year. Second thing on business that we kind of knew from what if we're in following the Cape Crusaders sort of many layers of uh, and we still don't know exactly where it's, what's going to happen. We assume it's going to be on Amazon. But Peter Saffron confirming content will not be exclusive to HBO Max. Content will be made and sold across multiple streamers and companies. That is interesting. They've already signed deals with the likes of Tubi. Uh, we know they have a deal they're working on with Amazon. So... That means they are going to put DC IP into the broadest reaches possible as opposed to saying you have to subscribe to HBO Max to get it. Brian, that's brilliant. You know why? Because everybody is watching these things on, every, on different platforms. You got to have this. You got to have that. 
Brian, that means box office numbers are expected to be astronomical. More money, more money, more money. <laughs> That's what that means. Yeah, I think it's... At, so, again, I think there's a financial ulterior motive, but I think it is smart from a branding perspective. Why? I go back to Rings of Power. Amazon put all that money into Rings of Power, but the number one thing they got out of Rings of Power was they reported that the viewership a wheel of time, terminalist, Jack Ryan skyrocketed because people came onto the service to see Rings of Power and then got fed. Oh, you like that? You might like this. The idea that that feed and that cue and that algorithm could feed you something DC related on all these major streamers, that's not nothing when it comes to awareness of your feature films. So you mentioned Marvel. Marvel didn't make it out of this press conference without getting its share of drive-bys. Yeah. <laughs> As we know, James Gunn has worked in the Marvel machine. Yeah. This was another piece of commentary I was very surprised to see in print. And I'm okay. sure it went right to Kevin Feige's office wall right after. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I know they're saying the right things and they're rooting for each other, but this wasn't exactly... So... James he's throwing he's he's throwing, he, he's throwing shots at his boy i see yeah. yeah well he is but if we say like if we just think about it from a business standpoint and an operational standpoint we don't know how successful this is ultimately going to be but as i said at the outset you cannot achieve i don't believe you cannot achieve the success of the mcu by doing everything identical to what they've already done i think the audience will sniff that out i think the the talent will sniff that out and the creatives will sniff that out before you ever get there. Like, mm -hmm. I kind of feel like that's more what Sony's trying to do. Like Sony's trying to basically build this spider verse by just copying the Marvel formula. And we can see how that's going. An atrocity. So you want Marvel financial success, but you got to do it a little different. So I liken this more to like military combat. It's like when you lose a war, if you're smart, you go look at your strategy, you change it. And for the next war, you might actually be ahead of the curve versus the guy who won the first war might just fight the same way the second time. So that's what I kind of see. DC lost big time. Yeah. Oh, yeah. But they're looking at where can we be different? Where can we be similar without being the same? So James Gunn brought up two things that I thought were aimed. He never says Marvel. The word Marvel. But if you don't think he's talking about Marvel with these comments, I don't know what you think he's talking about. <laughs> Quote, people have become beholden to release dates, to getting movies made no matter what. I am a writer at my heart. We are not going to make movies before the screenplay is finished. Who puts targeted release dates up on a slide at public presentations? <laughs> that boy. we know of. <laughs> it's Kevin Feige at Marvel, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, now, yeah. then he says, quote, they make these movies where they don't have the third act written and they start writing them during production. And so, you know, they're making them up as they're going along. And then wow. you're watching a bunch of people punch each other and there's no flow to the action. Quote, who is reputed to have third act problems. <laughs> Marvel. Yeah. Wow. I mean, that is, <laughs> I mean, that is very, very aggressive. So, yeah. but he is talking about something very unusual. Most blockbuster films go into production without a truly finished, polished screenplay. Most, not mm -hmm. just Marvel. He is saying they won't actually even shoot a frame unless the screenplay is polished and finished and agreed upon. That is going to slow the timetable. It's not bad. It's a good idea. I've never heard of it being pulled off before, but it makes sense. It makes sense. Uh, let's see if they... I mean, they're going to have to do rewrites and all that other stuff. They're going to have to go through the motions. I mean, again, these guys are trying to go at it in a different... in a very specific and rigid way, Brian. 
But it was didn't he say something about? Mar I, I, you say he didn't say Marvel, but I could have sworn I read something that he did say Marvel or referring to them, obviously, about having this formula, uh, the same formula. Uh, maybe you're referring to this quote. <laughs> okay. You can't be telling the same good guy, bad guy, giant thing in the sky, good guys win story again. You need to tell stories that are more morally complex. You need to tell stories, my favorite right here, that don't just pretend to be different genres, but actually <laughs> are different genres. <laughs> you know what, Brian? He says something very interesting in that when Marvel, I think Marvel's whole whole thing was with their superheroes is that, that, is that they had problems. They had issues. And I feel like James Gunn is referring to their, them straying away from that complexity with their characters and everything sort of looking kind of the same. Um, he ain't lying, Brian. No. I mean, I, we've made fun of Marvel because they always will tell you, oh, this is our version of our version of whatever. And then you watch it and you're kind of like, is it really? <laughs> it kind of looks and feels the same as the last movie. You know, that's what he's really saying, right? Versus we had this discussion. It, it is what makes the Batman, to me, an admirable accomplishment. That is a genre film. Like, yeah. it, it is. It's, yeah, yeah, it's yeah. committed to that bit. So we'll see. Again, these are big words. You know, we'll see when we get down the path. Will 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 the studio stick to it? Will these guys stick to it? Um, but again, I'm just shocked to hear what is now a studio head. James Gunn is a studio co-head talking about this type of filmmaking in these terms. Yeah. Wanted to highlight the cast comments that Peter Saffron made. They did not. They, they kind of made a very passing mention that actors you've seen before, characters you've seen before may appear again in the okay. future. Okay. They did not name exactly who they were referring to. They only named one person. <laughs> they said that will be true for some, but not Henry Cavill. So in theory, Jason Momoa, Aquaman, Gal Gadot, Wonder Woman, uh, Zachary Levi, Shazam, and even Ezra Miller, Flash, but I think that's a little bit of, you know, window dressing right now because of the movie that's coming. They kind of left the door open to the agents. That's how I view it as like, maybe we, you know, cameo, supporting role, you know, drop you a pretty good sized bag for three days work. Like we could talk about that. But not Henry Cav. That, that to wow. me was like, I mean, he, they black, he's blacklisted, man. That guy is like on a like, do not, they, like he shows up at the door, the like security has like his, <laughs> his picture in the computer. <laughs> do not let this guy in. <laughs> and I infer um, that to mean, again, I infer anything that's directed at Henry Cavill to be directed at The Rock behind him. That's kind of how I read that. You know, when you put that with James Gunn's previous comment where he said about casting, what matters is the actor is right for the part and easy to work with there it is what 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 else can we say i mean we, I, brian it's hard for me to to find the words to uh really dive into this any further we said what was happening for all this time we we i didn't know brian to what degree henry cavill's uh, not work ethic, Brian, but his collaboration yeah. in projects were. And I've heard from a couple of people, Brian, that they've heard who are, and these people work in the in the industry and they say that he's not easy to work with. He's a that, bit of a diva. Uh, we've been saying there's some smoke around that, and there's been that for a little bit. And I would that say this kind of confirmed it. This kind of confirmed it. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. It's a shame. I do think it is a little bit of like when you're in Camp Rock, there's a way of doing business. And he kind of took that to heart. And it, but I view state when the studio is making statements like this today, 
and the way they've made it leading up to it. It's like a, they're making examples of those guys, right? And they're saying like, we're not here. Like if you if that's how you play, that's great. Don't call us because we ain't gonna call you. We're never you, doing that again. Unless you are the rock and have your own productions, you not working with another studio is not willing to put up with the shenanigans, man. With we're doing it this way or 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 not at all. No, 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 no. The rock days are over. Those plays, those moves of showing up to spots without being invited, those days are over. thought this was interesting. Didn't get a lot of play. They named the writer's room that kind of worked on this. So, like, as I said, James Gunn, front man of the band, as we know, he's going he's gonna to be the social media guy. But there's other people in this. They came up with a pretty interesting mix of characters. They, we, and we didn't know any of this was going on. So, James Gunn is obviously the lead writer i guess you want to say in the writer's room they had one holdover from the previous dcu it was christina hodgson who wrote like birds of prey um actually did i think she wrote the flash as well i think that's the movie they're highest on she wrote the flash okay. um so they kept her around she's still in the writer's room tom king the comic writer we talked about him with superman up in the sky he's actually writing he's in the room writing for this okay so this is like yeah, this is like a little bit. I don't know. It's like echoes of Bruce Tim almost. Like the like the creator is there, like kind of there, shepherding yeah, a little yeah. bit of this. Which I think, listen, there's two Superman projects that are confirmed, and the fact that you have the guy who wrote, you know, super, who wrote both Superman and, and Supergirl, like I think is that's that's got to be encouraging. There's somebody in there who's lived and breathed Superman, who's going to be kind of helping steward that. But also thought it was interesting, Jeremy Slater, who wrote Moon Knight is okay. also now in the DC writer's room. So he is, he is interesting. Not a bad choice to, for like, especially because they want to do like monsters and horror and some different types of stuff. I thought Moon Knight had some really interesting ideas and, and, and writing. So yeah, yeah I just thought that was a kind of like, oh, I didn't really know these people were involved. Um, and that was, and that was kind of cool. Last thing though, is, you know, something that you and I have been on and, I just thought his fingerprints were all over this thing, which is money, cash. I did want to bring in, there's somebody who was not involved in this who dropped, I thought, some very relevant details, which was Dave Batista. So Dave Batista confirming that he pitched Bane to James Gunn and was turned down, but then mm -hmm. kind of said that they were looking for younger leads across the board. Yeah. Not just younger Superman. But then he come out recently saying that it, that wasn't the case about but uh, him coming into uh, to play a, a Bane. Yeah, but he kind of said like he kind of like they're looking to do things where you can build fifteen years worth of story. He said it diplomatically, but yeah. I am pointing out, and I think you would agree, is like when I take the totality of young, he's basically saying these younger actors are coming, which, as yeah. we said, generally are cheaper. Yeah, we heard a limit on the number of productions they are selling content beyond warner brothers walls they're making money that is we need cash in that we need ways to generate revenue yeah. today yeah and we need to not be spending 250 a pop on these films tomorrow so all of it to me is kind of saying like resources are limited here like they are not unlimited yeah like disney i would say unlimited you know like apple if they want to spend on the show unlimited but i think warner brothers is going to try to leverage some of that cash out there right because that's the whole point of the amazon partnership like they can get apple to the table like some of these shows can get bigger budgets and bigger backing by going partner and Warner Brothers gets some cash up front, yeah, as opposed yeah. to you put it up on HBO Max. This was the pandemic model. It's all on HBO Max subscribers and what you yeah. can charge for to make cash. So, listen, the road is being paved for what we have been saying, what needed to be done. James Gunn is coming in, cleaning the house and made it very clear what he wants to do and what he doesn't. What's, it's, it's, 
it's time for those people out there listening move on because it is over oh that that's the other thing yeah if you had any doubt any residual <laughs> doubt you're Snyderverse fan be like I'm going down with the ship the ship got sunk the hell is is. broadside ship down you, like you do you have the quote no, I, I don't I mean the one about the. I mean, I, the I mentioned the one where he basically lumped the Snyderverse into the chaos of DC and kind of what went wrong. But if yeah. you look at if when we get to the projects and what's on the board and what's le- like, it's very clear. Like, all right. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. And he says something very interesting, Brian. And I think uh, this is something, again, I've been saying for years already that the flash at the end of this movie he is going to reset everything yes Mm -hmm. i've been saying this for years man i'm tired of being right and now it's happening now it's confirmed so we can do do nothing else but uh move on certainly there's going to be some stragglers out there protesting you know no roger no rerun no rent so I love the one where they want, because Zach is over at Netflix, they want Netflix to like resurrect the Snyder. I'm like, well, I'm out, man. If you were to kind of, you know, if we were kind of give a star rating to the overall, just the approach they took, the, these, these quote, like the content of the presentation, not the content that's coming. Five stars being the same as, as, as an all time film and one star being a bomb. Like what, what would you give Gun and Saffron for what they did today? I think what they did today, Brian, was give us answers as to what what, what the DCU was going to look like. We weren't. Ex- he he told us already uh, prior to this announcement that he was going to announce it sometime around this time, right? What was the expectation? Did we expect for him to announce directors or actors? No. Would have been nice, but no, I think we're obviously going to be getting that uh, at San Diego Comic-Con because I'm pretty sure, like I said, Brian, it's going to probably be an historic Comic-Con. And what we've been asking for is what his plan is. And he revealed that plan or part of it. Chapter one, he calls it Gods and Monsters. Again, and at first, I wasn't... Uh, obviously, we knew we were going to get Superman, but some of these other projects I wasn't too sure of. Uh, but some of the things that he said ending his presentation regarding story, regarding things making sense, and that that is the most important thing they want to do right by the characters and right by us, the fans. I Like I said before... They realize the opportunity that they have uh, right now to do something that they never thought they would probably get to do, Brian. And so, you know, it's interesting. Tracy, uh, Freddie and I were having a conversation and Tracy doesn't really, I th- I think he's, he's neutral on James Gunn. And I'm hoping to have him on the show one day so that he, so we can discuss uh, what he feels about where James Gunn is taking the DCU and um, further discussing if he thinks this is going to be successful. I think it is because it's time for something new and I think he's he's one of those guys that's going to bring us something completely different but still yet treat these characters with the respect that it needs to uh, uh, to be given, so that's what I'm looking forward to. And the, again, out of five stars, Brian, I think I give it a four. And the reason why I give it such a high mark, Brian, is because they certainly laid the hammer down as to what we're not going to do. That's that's what got me excited. What we're not doing, what repeated what we've been saying for years regarding the DC EU and what was going on with the 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 the, the, the IP and I'm glad he said all of that cuz he's he he's in a position to really call it out right now right he's the man right now so 
I give it a four because all I wanted, Brian, all we wanted was some context as to where we're going with DCU. What are we starting with? Where are we going? And I think he gave it to us. I'm with you. I think it's a four. I don't think you can give it a five because I think for a five, you would have needed director cast. You would have needed. It has to be some San Diego Comic Con. <laughs> exactly. So you can't get a five. But at the same time, I think, you know, you give him four because I do think they're saying the right things about taking ownership, a recognition of where the studio has come up short in the past. Now, again, that's talk, right? We've got to see what the walk looks like. But the first step is recognizing you made a mistake in the first place. We never gotten a sense from the old DC regime that they even knew that they were making mistakes as it was happening. So I think that's important. I think I give him credit and I give the studio credit for at least examining the genre and saying, where can we add some wrinkles? Where can we take a little bit of a different approach? Again, do we know how successful? No, but I like that they're trying to think outside the box. And then I do give, you know, I do give credit on the business side. I really like the limitation of projects and I really like that they're putting DCIP into all corners yeah. of the streamer verse. I think, yeah, I think it's for cash purposes, but I do think if they're putting good stuff on these different services, people are going to get hyped about what they're doing. I have one question for you, Brian, before we wrap this one up. Given that they're doing this and be, and letting other streaming platforms use their IP, how connected will those uh, pieces of content on these different streams be connected to the DCU? I would assume that there is a lot of coordination, Brian, um, that has to be done. Uh, is Does it present a problem in terms of if they are seeking to be connected, is it a problem if they're trying to do that with all these other things going on in different streamers? So I actually, the way I understood Saffron's description of this relationship is they would handle all of the creative decisions, but it's the streamers who would handle the distribution. And I think what they're betting on, which I think they're correct about, is DCIP in and of itself is so valuable that the Amazons and the Apples don't really care if it's their people making it. They just care that they get to show it and promote yeah. it. Mm -hmm. Where I think partnership is a little less clear is the budget. So I, I have surmised for something like Cape Crusader that Amazon would wind up footing the bill for some of the production and the animation, thereby upsizing what like what the project's potential could be. It is not clear from Saffron's comments whether that will happen with what they intend to sell. I could certainly see it. Like I could certainly see a world where they're like, hey, we really have this idea for a sprawling TV show, but we don't have the money to really give it its due. And Amazon says, fine, you, you write 200 million, we'll write 200 million, there's a $400 million TV season for you. If Amazon does that, I would be surprised if they didn't want some input on what was going up on the service. So that's the part that's not as clear to me, but I think the goal is it's made by DC, it's marketed by the other places. And if okay. it's good, that will reverberate to people being like, hey, I saw that cool DC thing on Amazon. What's that? What else DC got coming out? Like, I think that's the idea. Interesting. Yeah, let us know. Oh, what? Yeah, that's right. You told it. You said a four to it. So Yeah, we both said four. Yeah, so let us know in the conversation below what you guys think of uh, this presentation of where the DCU is going. Did you expect a lot more than this? Did you expect something similar to what uh, I guess uh, Disney Plus has done it in the past in their investor uh, calls um, where they presented the, the, their, their lineup. When does Flash come out? It's this year, right? This year. This is the transition year. Okay. So it's Flash, it's Flash, Blue Beetle, Shaz well, Shazam, which is about to come out, and then Aquaman. And like 
those are the kind of transitions and the jump off points and the kind of wrap ups, which as you yeah. say, they confirm that Flash will reset. He literally said out explicitly yeah, yeah, yeah. Flash will reset the universe at that point. Yeah. So yeah, let us on the conversation below what you guys think of the all uh, of uh, James Gunn's presentation. Uh, I know you're excited about some of these projects, which we're going to be doing a show about in, in just a few. Uh, but let us know in the comment section below, are you excited for the DCU as much as we are? Uh, we'll see you next time on the Nerd Gym Report. Yeah.